People are sharing the creepiest unsolved mysteries that they can't stop thinking about. So I decided to look into the details of each one. Brandon Swanson's case always boggled my mind. The fact that he alerted his parents that he was lost and needed help. They were on the phone with him, heading toward him, only to hear his last moments. To know they were so close is so terrifying. Recently, Reddit user YouRandomWeeb asked the people of r Ask Reddit to share the creepiest unsolved mystery that keeps them up at night. After reading through some of these, I will definitely not be sleeping soundly for the next couple of days. Here are the most bone-chilling cases. Warning, disturbing and graphic content ahead. One. Deanne Hastings. A young woman vanishes after her first day of cosmetology school. Deanne Marie Hastings was a loving, caring, and devoted mother of three who was starting new adventures in life. Deanne absolutely adored her three children. They were truly the highlight of her life, according to friends and family members. Deanne had started cosmetology school and was looking forward to a bright future in the field, along with planning a wedding with her fiancé, Mike. Deanne's life seemed to be right on track to reach her biggest goals, when the unthinkable happened. According to Mike, Deanne did struggle with bipolar disorder, though she was learning to cope with the symptoms. He also informed police that Deanne was known to leave for short periods of time, but never longer than a couple of days. She had just told me how happy she was that she was in love and getting married. There are too many things that are wrong with this. It's different this time, very different. Carson Kreider, Deanne's brother. On November 3, 2015, Deanne attended her first day of cosmetology school. According to her fiancé, Mike, along with her son, Hayden, Deanne reported that her first day went very well, and it seemed that she was looking forward to her upcoming classes. After her day at the school was over, she returned to her home and was visited by her 17-year-old son, Hayden, and his girlfriend. Deanne went to the Leda Trading Company grocery store at approximately midnight. It is later learned that she purchased energy drinks, string cheese, birthday candles, cigarettes, and vodka. Shortly after, a call was placed to 911 by a Spokane, Washington salon owner, claiming that Deanne entered the salon seeming disoriented. According to the salon owner, Deanne called her mommy and claimed that someone had drugged and kidnapped her. Only minutes later, Another call is placed to 911 by two women who saw Deanne sitting nearby. The women reportedly offered her a ride home and offered their phones for her to call a family member. When authorities arrived, Deanne again informed them that she had been drugged and kidnapped, but she refused treatment or assistance and walked away. When Mike returned home from work at approximately 10 p.m. that evening, he found a note that Deanne had left for him. According to Mike, the note explained that she had a god day at class, she had just finished doing her nails, and that she had run to the store. Mike grew concerned when Deanne didn't return home. Around 11.30 p.m., when Deanne still hadn't returned home from the store, Mike began growing concerned. He decided to visit the grocery store to look around for Deanne, but she wasn't there. After he failed to find Deanne at the store, Mike drove around Spokane, searching for Deanne or her car. When he ran GPS to find her phone, he found her car parked in a parking lot across the street from the knitting factory in downtown Spokane, Washington. Deanne's car was locked, and inside were her purse and phone. Every day I pull up to our house and hope to see her there waiting on the porch. But she's just not there. I go to work, then I drive all around hoping maybe I'll see her. That's all I do. Just look for her. Mike Tibbetts, Deanne's fiancé. The following morning, November 5, 2015, Mike called the cosmetology school to see if she had reported for her second day of classes. She had not. Mike eventually calls authorities and reports Deanne missing after he visits the grocery store again to ask to view surveillance footage. Also around this time, Deanne's credit cards are used again at the Lada Trading Company grocery store. During another visit to the grocery store, 
Mike is finally able to view the surveillance footage. In the footage, he sees Deanne acting erratically and waving her hands while continuously looking over her shoulder. Several days later, Deanne's credit cards were used around Spokane, Washington. Deanne's credit cards were used again in several businesses around Spokane, Washington, at places like grocery stores, pharmacies, and convenience stores. Surveillance footage from the businesses showed a man with two other individuals using her cards. The man seen in surveillance footage is later identified as Randy Riley. At first, I wasn't too worried, but then the weeks went on and I knew something had to be wrong. It gets cold here. She has nothing. It's bad. Amanda, Deanne's friend. On November 7, 2015, Mike meets with a grocery store employee who allegedly spent time with Deanne on the night of her disappearance. According to this employee, he explains to Mike that he had met Deanne outside of the knitting factory where her car was later found, and that they spoke and shared a cigarette before Deanne had gone with him to his home. He explains that no sexual interaction between the pair took place, but the following morning, November 4, 2015, he returned to the grocery store to buy cigarettes with Deanne. According to this man, he went inside the store alone to purchase the cigarettes, and Deanne was gone when he returned. When later located and interviewed by authorities, Riley gave an interesting story about his interactions with Deanne. According to Riley, himself, along with his friend James, met Deanne near a storage unit in Spokane and had spent some time hanging out with her. He further explains that Deanne had given him her credit cards and asked him to go get himself something to eat. He maintains that he doesn't know where she is or where she could be. Riley's story later changes when he is charged with identity theft for using Deanne's credit cards. He explains that while hanging out with Deanne, she allegedly went up a hill to use the bathroom and never returned. He adds that the following day, while removing his belongings from his apartment, he went back with James to where Deanne walked off into the woods, where he claims they found her coat and shoes, which is where he found her credit cards. He also admits to throwing Deanne's license on the ground near a Spokane deli, where it had been found earlier. When James is questioned about his interactions with Deanne, he tells a similar story about Deanne's actions on the night of her disappearance. According to James, Deanne did go into the woods to use the bathroom, but when she didn't return, he claims that Riley went to check on her. James adds that Riley later informed him that Deanne didn't want to leave the spot and that Riley returned approximately 10, 15 minutes later without Deanne. James informs police that this was the last time he saw Deanne. Everything I can forgive. I don't care what it is. I will go get her no matter where she is. I don't care. I love her, and she can come back and start off where we left off. Mike Tibbetts, Deanne's fiancé, where the case stands today. In February of 2016, a large-scale search for Deanne was conducted by community members on Deanne's 36th birthday. The group reportedly split into eight separate search parties to search separate areas where Deanne may have last been seen on the day of her disappearance. We simply don't know if she chose to be gone or not. She's not going to be in trouble, but we need to know she is safe. The circumstances are strange enough. We are concerned. Officer Teresa Fuller, Spokane City Police Department. Today, Deanne's case remains unsolved, and law enforcement, her friends, family, and children, continue searching desperately for her or any sign of her around the Spokane, Washington area. If you have any information, please contact the Spokane Police Department's tip line at 509-242-TIPS-8477 or send your tip in an email to spddtipline at spokanapolice.org. We just love her and want her home safe. I always told her that God gave me her as a best friend and she needs to be back here. Amanda, Deanne's friend. Yeah, baby. So you got baby.
Hey, your turn. I don't use it.